Hello, everybody. How you doing? It's, uh, gosh, what time is it? Two o'clock, January 3rd. And um, you know, what I want to do these days is um, a lot of people email me with questions and a lot of questions that um, they can't find answers to anywhere on the internet. And it's kind of becoming to the point where I really want to be able to open up a forum, especially using Facebook and Twitter and social networks where you guys can ask me questions of stuff that is really hard to find anywhere. You know, not just like generic, um, you know, how do I build an app type of questions. It's more like, here's my specific problem, um, what do I do? And I think that it's it's really great to be able to have a dialogue with um, different people. And I think that's what's great about social networks, but it's also great to have like an individual response. Um, and so depending on how this goes and how, how it, evolves. Um, what I really want to do is is go through the answers that everyone gives on, you know, when I ask a question, especially on specific topics, if we can get it big enough and be able to give you some uh, insights from my perspective. Hopefully that'll spark some ideas from other people. We can get the conversation going. But uh, more than anything, I just want to create a place where we can all talk about it, where you guys can hear from me. Um, you know, I would love to hear back from you. Feel free to, to leave comments of your own experiences, which you've done. But I think it could be really cool. Uh, and I'm going to start putting this on YouTube as much as I can to kind of create a, a bit of a buzz and just kind of, you know, I think it's a cool idea, kind of like an open source consultant. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, that's, that's kind of the deal. And we'll see how it goes, but uh, hopefully it works out. I think at some point it would be cool to make it bigger like a hangout or something. But um, for now, this I think this will be cool. So I'm just going to go through um, yesterday. I think it was, yeah, it was yesterday, I, I asked on my Facebook page, uh, what's the burning app question you want straight answer to, but you can't seem to find info on anywhere? Like, what are some things that you've Googled 50 times or talked to 20 people and they're just, and you just still can't get like the answer that you're looking for? Um, and you guys put up some really, really good questions and I, I did some thinking on it and hopefully, um, I don't have all the you know, solid answers, but um, I do have some ideas that uh, hopefully will will point you in the right direction or help you out. So the um, the first question was, you know, how do you get your app on the first page of the App Store? And there's, oh, you know, there's two different answers to that because I'm not sure if Judy, if I don't know if you mean like the first page, like, oh, it's uh, featured, you know, on like what's new and noteworthy or um, you know what's hot, or if you mean in, like the top 25 or whatever for you know, just like organic rankings or whatever. Um, the first being, you know, the Apple marketing team literally sits down and decides on which ones they want. And, you know, the reviewers will flag certain apps that they think have potential, and those get filtered up to the to the marketing team. And the marketing team will, you know, it's essentially like, is this app unique? Is this moving the app store in the right direction? Do they, do they follow all the guidelines? Is this a really great app? And um, that's, that's a lot of... What did it, what, what goes into it? Um, on a business level, what also happens is that um, there's a lot of people, a lot of PR firms, a lot of companies, a lot of editorials that are very good friends with Apple and are very good friends with um, uh, the people that make those decisions. And if you have a really good app and you have a bunch of money and <clears throat> you have a really great brand, you can you know you, you can team up with people that will say, you know, part of our strategy is going to get you onto that new and noteworthy. Um, so that's why you always see really, really premier games there. That's why you see uh, companies and publishers that seem to have games there over and over um, because they have those relationships established. Um, there are definitely some indie developers that get up there. I've met a lot of people that have um, been able to, to put their, to get their app up there and they didn't even know it. Um, but it all comes down to having just like a really amazing app really great icon the icon makes a huge difference uh, and adhering to all the marketing guidelines that's a big piece and that's talking to those Apple people they they've told me that you know right off the bat about 50 percent of people get knocked off the other um, potential answer to your question if you mean the ranking stuff um, you know we can, we'll, we'll definitely get it, have a Q a on rankings specifically next time or you know a few times. But to get to the top 25, I mean, that's based on download download volume. And there's a trailing algorithm on that, which I think is about five days, with a weighted on the fifth day, um, and then it 
it's less weighted as it gets down to what, what today is. Meaning that what your rank was five days ago compounds itself with the, with the graduated rankings of the, of the previous four days. So if you want to get up to like the top 10, say, you have to have uh, a ranking score that's going to get you to say, okay, I've ha I established this ranking, I get this many downloads a day, um, or installs a day, I should say, and um, <clears throat> that can happen through a variety of different sources. Um, you can drive those installs from CPI networks or, or advertising. Um, it can be organic traffic off of keywords. It can be PR viral, and we'll get into some more of this stuff. But essentially, to get on the top there, you need to have a, um, a specific amount of volume, and it takes different amounts of volumes to get on the top of different categories. Um, and that just comes down to market research and things like that. Um, so that I, I think I hope that that answers the question. Um, I think what, to take it the next the next step becomes a question of, you know, okay, so how do I get the that volume? And that becomes a marketing discussion. We can definitely talk about that. Um, I think that that that'll be a really good follow up uh, the next conversation. Uh, so the second question. Um, Chad and Mike actually both had questions about in-app purchases and specifically how to incentivize those in-app purchases for people, uh, reviewers, or people that share on Facebook. Um, and they want to be able to create a discount, like the almost as if like a, with a promo code. And uh, there's a few caveats for, for those of you out there that don't know. On Apple, uh, if you give a promo code out, um, it's only for the uh, for paid downloads. So you can't give a promotion code for like oh, we're going to, um, this, this in-app purchase is now free or whatever. Um, what you can do is you can, you can discount an in-app purchase uh, in real time, the same way you can make an app free in real time. So if you're going to do like a free app a day promotion, often they, they do pricing structures built on, uh, okay, I'm going to make this in-app purchase free for a day. And that can actually be a promotion as while well, you still have a paid app. I mean, typically you won't have a paid app, but... Um, that's an option. And so uh, I did some thinking on this, and the only way I can think about doing this, and let me just make sure that I'm, I'm addressing this specifically. Um, you know, Chad's question was, can you offer a discount for an in-app purchase for sharing a page in the app? So like when someone shares it on Facebook, can, can a $2.99 in-app purchase become 99 cents? And then Mike's um, was kind of like, you know, how do you give a promo code for an in-app purchase? And um, the, the answer that I, the only thing I can think of, and this is, um, I'm not entirely sure that, that Apple would be okay with this, but the only really, the thing I could really think of is the idea of like creating an exclusive section. So like in your app. So let's say you have like your app and everything, you got your store, and then you've got like a members only section where you click a button and a pop-up comes up where you have to type in a password and then that password like takes you to a new screen, like you know the exclusive store. And in that store, there's a new set of in-app purchases where it might be uh, the discounted information, the discounted in-app purchases that um, that you want to give out to your reviewers that no one else will see. And so you can actually create your own promo codes or whatever systems, send them to your reviewers. They'll come into your app. They'll go into the exclusive section and they'll type in you know promo code one two three which is completely up to you how you program it in. And that'll allow them to access an area of the app that has uh, in-app purchases that will unlock the exact same areas, but you can price them differently. They'll be separate entities in the, in the app and in the iTunes Connect. I don't, I don't know if Apple would, would approve that. I really don't. Um, but that's kind of, that's how I would go about it. You know, a set of, instead of playing by their rules in terms of like, oh, this is what you can do for promotion in the in-app purchase, um, you know, create your own promotion structure inside the app. And it'll give you a lot more control over, over what's going to happen. Um, and then you can actually, you know, you can control the pricing in that. You can ex control who, who sees the promo code. You can do everything uh, and not be holding to their, them as the gatekeeper. Um, so that's you know that's what I think. I have no idea if that's if that'll work or if they'll prove it. Um, but that you know it, it could be a, could be a worth a shot to check out. Okay, so the next question is um, I want he wants to update an app. This is Pratap. Hope you're pronouncing that correctly. Pratap. 
I want to update an app but can't hire the old programmer again. Uh, how can I be sure that the new programmer won't steal my code or maybe upload a similar app into the store? And that's a really, really good question because I think a lot of people, especially now, are very hesitant of, uh, you know, hiring someone and then being like, well, how am I protected? You know, how do I know this is, a, I have some security on this. Um, Honestly, the like okay. So legally, what you can do is you can get an NDA. You know, you can you can sign a confidentiality agreement. You can sign. You can make up agreements. You can get your lawyer to write whatever you want, um, as much as you as you want. But like honestly, if you hire someone uh, across the, on the other side of the world, um, you know, are you really gonna like fly over there and, and sue them? I don't know. Maybe like it's. But it will give you some legal rights and. If, um, more than anything, what will happen is that you wouldn't sue them, but you could go to Apple and Apple would take that, like, you know, take down their app, potentially remove their developer account, whatever it may be. Um, but, you, you know, it's kind of a lot of legwork. On, an, on a less legal scale, on more of a kind of personal level, what you can do is, you know, do, do a very serious vetting process of these programmers and work you know, on a few very, very small test projects with them, um, you know, kind of get to know these guys really well. And, you know, it just kind of becomes a leap of faith in a lot of ways, like a little bit of trust. Like you obviously, it's a very much a business relationship. There's a lot of legal, you know, you make sure that it's all there. But at the end of the day, you just have to say, okay, like I'm going to trust that you're not going to screw me. And if you don't, and this is successful, like we're going to be great partners. And that's how that's how it worked with works worked and is working with my companies or my development guys. It's just like it was a little risky at first, and I wasn't really sure. And then I was just like, I'm trusting you, and I hope this works out. And if it does, you know, it's gonna be a really good time. And um, they responded. And they said, Yeah, we're here. We're in for the long haul. We want to have a good partner. Um, and I think that you'll find, that, which is what I found, and I think a lot of other people find is that developers, um, they deal with a lot of really, really bad clients. Um, so it's interesting as clients on our side when we're always like, oh, how do we find the best developers? Uh, I talk to a lot of developers who are like, God, how can I find good clients? Like, how do I find people that, that aren't like, you know, trying to, they, they know a little bit about Xcode or whatever. Um, so if you can, if you can become a good client to the programmer, I think you'll be very surprised at how willing they are to help you out and that they you know the idea of screwing you over um is not really in the in the cards um so that's i, I mean i think that that's as good as an answer as, as any um a lot of it just comes down to you know who who do you who do you jive with like who, who the, the people you meet that you you really that you think is this is going to be a good match um so let's see, outside of your own app network, SEO and buying ads, what other effective ways do you drive traffic to your apps? Um, well, I'm gonna answer this in a general sense because honestly, outside of those, I don't really do a whole lot. Um, but the, the, the global scale, uh, you know, there's kind of, there's a bunch of buckets. So there's obviously your own app network, which um, once you get to that point, it, it can be a very effective tool if you want to do something, you know, quickly or, you know, you want to have full control over it. Um, SEO or ASO or whatever you want to call it, organic search in the app market, um, that's, that's typically what I work on. That's a big bucket. Um, buying ads, I think that that's kind of the, there's a lot of different ways to buy ads. And so touching base on that real quick, you know, there's CPI networks, which means that you actually go out and buy the installs. So you can do that on Tapjoy very cheaply. You can do that on Chartboost. You can do that on uh, a whole range of networks um, as long as you have the SDKs installed. Um, and realize that a lot of that is done less um, because you want to buy the users and more because you just want to buy the installs that's going to drive your organic rankings up so that you're going to get the chart effect so that you're going to be ranked number 20th and that the the install buy that you do is going to be matched by the organic traffic that comes from being number 20. Um, what you'll also find or at least what I've found is when I talk to some of these high level you know mobile traffic guys who can just like blow out traffic um, these guys like 
they look at C CPI networks as like a very small piece of the puzzle. And they're using the web a lot more than, uh, than I would, which is, you know, when, that's when you're talking, you know, millions of, of installs that you're trying to, to harm, you know, cultivate or whatever you want to call it. Um, YouTube's a really good, can, it can be very good um, traffic driver. And I don't mean like making a trailer of your app and putting it up there. I'm talking like uh, creating partnerships, uh, creating themed partnerships. So finding, like creating, uh, doing YouTube SEO and getting a lot of traffic to a video and then having your link in that video. It doesn't even have to be like anything to do with your app necessarily. But if you, if you can control that uh, or find someone who has that video and get your, your link in there, that can be a great way to do it. Um, another big big piece um, PR can be really effective if you have an app that fits kind of like the PR mold and not a lot of apps do especially games it's really hard with games um, basically you just have to have a really good story a really good story and a really good design because you're gonna sell the story more way more than you're gonna sell uh, the app in a PR but if you do that you can get you know big trap big like eyeballs and traffic and potentially uh, up on the on the App Store, um, you know, and that sort of thing. And, you know, I think the third piece is like that, you know, isn't up there is, is, you know, viral coefficient or social media, um, the ability to have, you know, create Twitter and Facebook applications within your, you know, within your actual app so that it can get, you know, go viral, um, creating those multiplayer Systems um, like check out Haze app. I use, the, I use them for a few of my apps. They're great. It's like a social gaming SDK, kind of like open or what GR Gree is now, uh, what Open Faint was. Um, so like you know, I think that that's kind of the way to do it, where you can create the 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 web very quickly. Um, social networks have created that for us. Multiplayer, if it's a game, um, is can be a really good way um, to create that sort of uh, multiplayer you know, kind of multiplier effect. Um, so yeah, I think, that, I mean, I think that those are kind of the big, the big buckets. Um, after a certain point, it does come down to money too. And like, I think that that's very, I, you know, I'd be remiss not to say that, that at the, at the end of the day, like if it's not clicking, if you're, if you're doing everything best practices and you're, you're working really hard and it's like, you know, it's just kind of hitting the ceiling at a certain point. You just got to start spending money on, on CPIs and, and buying ads and finding out that way. Um, and it, it can, it can work really well, but it's, it, you got to be ready to make that step. So that's, uh, I hope that answers the question. I think that there, there's a ton to talk about there, but you know, kind of going, so it goes, right. Um, and lastly, uh, let's see, David Janner, Dave, what's up, man? It's good to see you posting on here. Uh, how to create and monetize games for indie developers with a small budget? Uh, wow, big question, but an awesome question because um, okay. So let me let me preface this by saying I think something that is uh, really important to remember is what your expected ROI is on an app. Right, so I think a lot of people forget that most, you know, if you if if a company gets an ROI of twenty five percent in the first year, it's like a wild success. I mean, it's a huge success, and that's what an app is. It's a, it's a very small business, so just just keeping that in mind, um, realize that you know the idea of spending a thousand bucks. And making five thousand in six months is like incredibly difficult to do. Like incredibly difficult to do, but it's possible. But in the grand scheme of things, you you know expectations need to be managed. Um, and that being said, I think that there are a, a lot of things that you can do on a very small budget. One thing that I found, obviously, the flipping apps thing, um, which is kind of you know. It's not for everyone, but some people have had huge success with it. Um, I would say finding, hit the ground running. Um, use your money to buy a proven model already, or you know, start with something 
don't try to reinvent the wheel. Don't try to create a um, an absolute one hit wonder where you're going to be like, I'm just going to spend a thousand bucks and it's going to be the next fart booth or whatever. Um, you know, spend a thousand dollars on a model that you've seen work, that's proven, um, that is easily monetized, and you know, do what everyone else has been doing to make back your money and then some. Um, don't try to knock it out of the park on on us only have a small budget um, <clears throat> in terms of monetization strategy if you have a small budget you're gonna make your money back a lot faster on uh, using advertising than you want in-app purchases uh, unless you get a ton of volume and the reason I say that is because with a small budget the or I should, to make back a lot of money on in-app purchases you have to have a very good store and um, in-app purchase kind of model, like a currency system. That's how you make a ton of money on in-app purchases. And there's no, I shouldn't say that, it's very, very difficult to create a really lucrative um, model on a small budget. You know, it can happen, it's possible, um, but it's gotta be more than just like, you know, do you wanna buy this new uh, set of weapons or do you wanna upgrade to no ads here or do you wanna have this? It's gotta be more of like, you know, you got 45 different power-ups you can buy and you got to earn coins and whatever uh, for it to even like begin to have um, some semblance of a, of a revenue model uh, and that's why a lot of the, the kind of like you know churn and burn type games especially the ones that I do are you know the the money that's coming in off those is, is entirely off of um, you know from the predominantly off of RevMob, off Chartboost, off Mopub which Mopub is, a, is an ad mediator it's a banner ad but it'll serve up like iAds, uh, AdMob, you know, tap it, like, like 30 different ad networks all compete in real time to get that ad space, um, and which monetizes a lot better than just a straight iAds network. So um, I guess what I'm saying is that tr when you have a small budget and you want to monetize it, pick a, you know, pick a, a, a framework or work with a framework that has has proven success where you've seen that work you know for me it's been a running a running platform and that has worked the flurry analytics have shown me that it works um, the next is is you know pick a theme that th there's two ways to do that you can pick a theme that you're gonna be able to sell good advertising on so for me it was baby animals um, might be racing, car racing, or gambling, or it might be uh, you know fantasy or whatever. Or um, pick a theme that's there's a lot of search volume. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said for you know thinking about kind of tongue in cheek apps, like almost creating entertainment apps with games. Um, I mean the Gagum style app was an example of that, but I think that there's a lot more to do to go on there. Um, especially in the lesser le lesser popular uh, game categories, um, and I think you know the bottom line on that is that there, there's so many different ways we can talk about uh, creating and monetizing games like that. Um, but I think that that's that's where I would start. I know I kind of rambled about that, but uh, I apologize. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's I think that's all the questions there are right now. Um, I hopefully. We can do this some more often. I'm gonna start. Hopefully, we we'll get some responses, and um, you guys let me know what you think. And uh, if you have more questions, or if there's topics you guys want to talk about, just you know, throw it on Facebook, and we'll we'll talk about it and see if we can get some answers and some ideas out there. And um, all right, cool. I'll catch you guys soon. Later.